think we're live. I don't know, this, this Google Hangout kind of messes me up sometimes. But welcome back to NCB Live. This is episode number six. Uh, we're here, and uh, me and Greg are back on the show. We also got a special guest with us. Uh, since today's going to be a little uh, March Madness heavy, we figured we brought, uh, you know, brought on one of our experts. We got Tate. Pronounce your last name, Tate. I don't know. I know, I know I'm going to murder it. Vobach. Vobach. All right. Yeah. You're, you were close last time, just a little bit off, but you're not the only one. Everyone always mispronounces it. All right, we got it. It's like, okay, we got it. And we also got, you got your guest over there too, don't you, Greg? Yeah, man, she's, she won't make an appearance right now. The dog is uh, saving it for the end right now. All right, all right. So if you guys hear a dog barking, we'll blame it on Greg. <laughs> um, like I mentioned before, today's show is going to be a lot of, uh, we're going to talk a lot about the NCAA tournament. Um, we didn't forget it was also MLB opening day. It just happens to be we don't really follow baseball very much. So um, although I don't follow baseball, I haven't really followed in a couple of years, I still believe that the Yankees suck. So I, I figured I'd wear this shirt for today. That's our MLB uh, contribution for today's show. Um, send your hate mail to at NCB 24-7. I'll be ready for it. Um, and speaking of hating um, and, and, and things like that, the, the reason I have my Silky Johnson of, of the sports blogs here, um, I've been called a hater as of late. Uh, a lot of my, my posts that I've been writing on the site, a lot of my Twitter banter has been um, all of that stuff. So I'll be your chairman of the Player Haters Ball today. That'll be my theme for the show. Um, but I'll, I'll, do, I'll let most of the talk and go to Greg and Tate today. Um, and we've got to get just started right off the bat, um, unless you were living under a rock this weekend. Kevin Ware... Ridiculous injury. Uh, we got to talk about that. I, I guess what, you, what is your what was your guys' first impression when that happened? You know, you know, I actually didn't see it. I was one of the fortunate people that happened to not be looking at the screen when it happened. Uh, so just the description of what happened and some of the re seeing some of that reaction from the bench afterwards. Was was enough for me, you know. When you see Rick Pitino out there crying, that's you know it's it's a, it's a bad situation. So now I was happy that I didn't see it, but man, I feel bad for him. You don't expect something like that to happen in a basketball game. It's just a horrible thing to have happen. Yeah, I mean, I was watching the game live, and at first I saw the bench kind of do their thing. They kind of freaked out a little bit. I was like, "What was that all about?" And then I saw the leg, and I was just like, oh, my goodness, look at his leg. And everyone I was around was kind of just like, what are you yelling about? And it's like, look at, look at his leg. And then they sh started showing the replay. And I was like, CBS is going to regret showing this replay because it is not good. And then, I mean, everyone saw it, and it was bad. I mean, I feel bad for the guy. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, I didn't even see it either. Um, I still haven't seen it. I refuse to see it. Um, I, I've, I've kind of reached out to, to, to Twitter, you know, what happened and what it's compared to. Um, I actually just went to go grab a quick bite to eat, and all of a sudden I see people crying on the court. I'm like, what did I miss? And um, they mentioned, I think Clark Kellogg was talking about uh, an injury that happened. I'm like, I'm not looking at the TV. I'm going to wait to feel this out. But there must have been something going on with his knee before that. Like that just. I read, I read somewhere, um, supposedly he had stress fractures that went unnoticed, so it kind of weakened his bones. Um, so that could have been – because honestly, it looks like he kind of landed normally to what I to what I saw, and then but his leg just snapped. So uh, it, it was it was bizarre. Um, and then I didn't notice at first that this stuff doesn't really make me squeamish. I didn't notice at first, but his actual bone was actually sticking out of the skin as well. I didn't notice that at first, but then after looking at videos and pictures, I noticed that. So yeah, that's rough. Um, pretty calm about it when they were showing him laying on the floor. Like I would have been like. Yeah, exactly. I'm my ass off, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what he. You know, it's funny. I was reading an interview with him today, that that was saying how about talking about just that though about his reaction, and he says it really was just a state of shock. He said it really wasn't like the pain. It was just that he was just in shock. So that's what came. What made kind of that reaction that you were just talking about, Derek, was that he really wasn't comprehending what was going on. He was just in shock. That's right. nuts. That is nuts. I don't know. I really I, – I kept hearing descriptions that it was kind of a combination of Sean Livingston's injury. I don't know if you remember him but back when he first came into the NBA and uh, Ed McCaffrey's leg injury. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually saw those two. and Those grossed me out, so I could only imagine if this was worse than that. Right. 
I don't know, but to me it was kind of Ed McCaffrey and Joe Theismann. Oh, oh boy! Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess since we're kind of bringing up the, you know, where it, what kind of reminds us of what this injury reminds us of, uh, we'll kind of skip back to what I had planned before. But I guess sports injuries that stood out to you guys. I mean, we've already mentioned McCaffrey. We mentioned Theismann. The Theismann one was nuts because I mean, you see a, a badass like Lawrence Taylor crying. You know, you know it's got to be pretty vicious. You know, he was probably, probably coked out of his mind, and he was still crying about it. Um, probably. That's probably what the tears came from. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess he's probably snoring off of one of his bones. But uh, what – I guess what in, other injuries that stand, stand out to you guys, if any? Go ahead, Greg. Uh, you, it's interesting. So a, a lot of them run through my mind. You know, that Theismann one really – does pop into your mind right away. One that sticks out to me that just happened more so for the reaction than it is, even though the injury was bad, was Marcus Lattimore last year. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. That that one was pretty bad. And then, like I said, the reaction to it afterwards. You know how everybody kind of came together and like they were real nice about it. But I'm still sort of like amazed that he's trying to even come back and play football, much less play this soon. Mm-hmm. Um, me ones tend to stick out to me. So Willis McGahee's injury jumps out to me. That I one thought was- that one in particular revolutionized like injury replays. Like yeah, that, they didn't really show it as they showed like a three D angle of it. They showed the inside of his somebody got a camera inside of his leg. Like they showed every possible angle they possibly could for that injury. And after a while, I seen it fifty times. It was not so bad because I just saw it so many times. Yeah, I've seen that so many times now that I actually can watch that one. One that sticks out to me that people don't know about or don't talk about is a uh, NHL goalie by the name of Clint Malarchuk. Played for the Buffalo Sabres uh, in 1989. They're playing a game, and his neck get, gets cut by, by a skate. What? Severs the artery. And blood is literally just spewing out onto the ice. Um, spectators, like a few of them, passed out. I think a couple of them had heart attacks. Um, he he ended up almost dying. Actually, they said that if it would have happened on the opposite end of the ice, he would have died because the arena, the way it was built, there was only one side where you could enter into the, into the locker room. And thankfully, he was on the closer side. Uh, so they were able to get him into the locker room really quick. But, yeah, that that's the one that sticks out to me. And it's kind of different. Not many people know about it. But, I mean, if you Google Clint Malarchuk. How do you spell uh, that? Yeah, I will not be Googling that. Like, yeah, how do you spell that, though? I'm probably not going to Google that. But I'm interested to look at the story on that. Uh, C-L-I-N-T is his first name. Last name, M-A-R-L-E-C-H-U-K. Yikes. That sounds nuts. I don't even know how I'm gonna follow that, man. Like, yeah, really. You just went all like Mortal Kombat type of. <laughs> uh, now I seem like a joke. Now I was gonna say the Psycho Sid knee injury back in 2000, jumped off the top rope and his leg went literally 90 degrees to the side. It was just hanging in his boot. But that doesn't sound so gross now, Tate. You just kind of, <laughs> damn. <My bad. laughs> yeah, you kind of warmed it up on that one. Yeah, I don't even know, man. Like. I don't know what picture I'm going to put on the side here once we edit this video. Like, it's going to be something. Don't, don't put Clint Malarchuk's picture. <laughs> don't put that up there. YouTube will take my videos down. Oh, man. All right, I don't even know if we can go really need to talk about any other injuries now since Tate just kind of dropped the mic on us. But I, I, we'll kind of go back to Kevin Ware then. Um, you know, obviously, sports nowadays, you really can't watch sports without, you know, social media and things like that. And then the reaction to the injury was – for the like ninety five percent was like oh my god I hope he's okay like I don't want to see this you know what's going on uh, but there's always you know there's always those people that want to be funny and there was already a parody account within minutes uh, people were like making fun of the, the you know they're making funny gifs of it or gifs I think we still have this me and Greg always have this argument if it's gifs or gifs but uh, we. I guess, what are your guys' thoughts, and where do we draw the line on, you know, making jokes about this stuff? Is it just kind of a time period after he's fine in a couple of years, or is it just like, it's fair game, it's social media, you should expect the snark? 
No, nah, I think as I was. I'm, I, I agree with you that right away, about ninety five percent of it really was, you know, people being really respectful. And I think in this situation, this kind of thing, I think you got to kind of take the high road on this one. I don't think that the snark is okay in this situation until uh, an appropriate amount of time has passed. So say once he like comes back and plays and he's like a little bit successful, he ain't playing. We can talk a bit. No, yeah. then we can talk about how you know his leg fell off. But as of right now, you you can't do it. Yeah, I'm kind of on the, I'm on the same page. I just think it's disrespectful. You know, I saw the parody accounts. I've also seen um, at least two or three other accounts that are just acting like Kevin Ware that have gained like, like thirty five thousand followers in the past twenty four hours. You know, I mean, people are just looking for attention. I just I think it's selfish, disrespectful. There's no room for that. I, I don't thing, see what that attention is going to get you. Like, what right, you exactly. Do? It's stupid. One thing about joking is Kevin Ware's actual account, I kind of laughed. I retweeted it. He said, I should have blocked that shot, though, LOL. And I thought that was kind of funny that he can joke about it a little bit. But, that's I mean, pretty, other, for other people, I don't think that's right. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I was, And I'm a guy that always makes fun of everything. I mean, I was, I'm calling out, like, coaches' kids and stuff, and <laughs> I'm not one to get, like, Rinaldi style on everybody, but even I was like, oh, come on, man. Let's, like, let's let's be cool about this one. Let's not do anything. And right. You know it's bad when I do that, but, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. I thought it was. I thought it was a little bit too far, though, with the the people trying to make the fake accounts. And I'm with you on the parody account thing. There was a Kevin Ware's leg account. <laughs> like literally before, like it seemed like before they even came back to start play again, it was up. Like it was, yeah, there it was just over the line. With Think about it. You have to be like waiting for something like that to happen. I you agree. have to have an email account to sign up that Twitter account. Like yeah. you have to do all of this to be ready for it, like instantly. Like you have like no life if you're doing that. I agree. It's ridiculous. I don't know, but. I mean, it's cool that like, he's kind of have a good attitude about it. You know, he had, he's, they show pictures of him with the trophy, and he's telling everybody to win it. Um, and I'm thinking he has that good attitude because he's getting help for paying for that injury. Right. I, I guess I mean, we were talking about this before the show, but I guess Louisville is partly paying for it. The NCAA, I mean, they're supposed to be behind every athlete, aren't they? I mean, that's their big commercials right now. Are they helping out? I would. I we're gonna. I wish we. Had, I had thought about this like more before the show because I. I would have literally wanted to like to do some deep in depth research on it. But I'm. I'm interested to know what the actual split is. Like as I was saying before the show, I've seen conflicting reports on that. I've seen where Louisville pays. You know, most of the bill. The NTA pays part of it. That makes sense to me. That that would happen. That there's no way that it, that when someone gets injured playing college athletics for your school, that you should then have to pay for that. But then again, this is the NCAA where your coach can't take you out to Old Country Buffet without getting a secondary violation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, which when we were talking about this too, like, and I know, Tate, you have strong opinions about this, is should athletes get paid? I mean, this would, this would be a perfect argument for people like, hey, I could – my career is over now. I lost all my money. You don't let me go pro early anymore in, in college basketball. You want me to stay, and I blew my life out on the court. You know, like. Yeah, I'm very, very split on this. I'm, I'm, I can understand both sides. There's one side that says, you know, you're making me go to school for at least one year. If I want to play, you know, they can go overseas, but, I mean, other than Brendan Jennings, nobody's really done that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're going to make me go to school, then I should have at least some some compensation. But then I also understand the people that say, which this is kind of the side I'm usually on, they are going to school, and they just so happen to play basketball. Uh, they are a student athlete, you know, students who come first. I mean, I go to school. I don't get paid. I, don't, I mean, of course, I don't play basketball and bring in money for my school, but, you know, it's 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 a tough situation. It's a... It's a good argument, but yeah, I mean, I I'm, I'm kind of down the middle too. Like, 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 I agree with everything you just said there, but at the same time, I think Jay Billis always brings it up. It's like, you can be a musician and get paid on the side, right? Uh, but, but again, they're not bringing money into the school either. Um, you're getting an education, um, and I, I think for me, it's, it's going to be a slippery slope. And 
if you start paying players, how they, what system is it going to be? Like, it yeah, exactly. It's going to be all the schools that have high money making football programs that can afford to do this. Because usually a lot of the athletic programs are not even making money. Uh, it's just going to be like the top 50 schools, and then they're going to have like a, a lower level of Division One after that because nobody can afford to do that. Right. I mean, you look at Ohio State, Oklahoma, that burnt orange school that starts with a T that I know you really love. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, they they make the most money, so how would they would they would just have to set a set amount where you can't exceed that and. But there would be so many recruiting issues with that. It, it would, I think it would be a big mess. But I mean, the SEC already pays for players. It would just be yeah. out in the open now. I don't know. It's I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts, Greg, on that? It's kind of a fishy. You know, I'm always I'm always on the side of getting that money. I'm on the side of letting the players get paid. But I, the problem is what you guys were just talking about. How in the world do you put this into place? And who legislates this? So if we don't trust the NCAA to legislate what's going on now, do we really think that they're going to effectively institute some sort of a player payment system? Like, and how do you do that across the sports? So for just something that we know well, Derek, at Nebraska, Football, obviously, is king at Nebraska, right? But how do you then give money for, say, the people that are, like, swimming and diving or, like, gymnastics? Like, how does that break down? They don't make as much money, so they do they only get, you know, a percentage of revenue? Like, I don't I don't know how, how you would do that. But I just think that – but at the same time, I can see the argument for, well, they're getting an education, they're getting other, quote, unquote, perks, which they do get. Um, but I think that that's a perfect world scenario. I think that if most of those guys were there to get that education first and then, like, be a student first and then be an athlete like it's supposed to be, then I think it would be a better situation. But as it stands now, the schools make so much money that I think that the kids deserve to get some too. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of a bigger – I mean, we'd have to dedicate, like, series of shows to kind of dig it down on each of that. <laughs> right. I wasn't even really ready to talk about this either, but I don't know. It's messy. It is. So, let's kind of get off the serious stuff here. Right? We kind of took a, a turn for like a Bob Lee type of segment here. One let's, thing, let me say one thing about Kevin Ware's injury. Yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to say this now. This is my, this is my prediction. This is going to turn into, other than Theismann, the biggest, most popular injury of all time. The reason behind that is if Louisville ends up winning, winning the championship, which I think they will, everyone is going to talk about Kevin Ware getting hurt in the Elite Eight, and Louisville rallying to it. It's going to be one of those, you know, like remember where you were moments. And, I mean, it was almost bigger than the game. I mean, people talking about the game today were like, do you see the leg injury? That's almost like the bigger storyline. I just think that this thing is going to blow up. I, I'm, I'm almost with you on that prediction, actually. Yeah, I could actually see that. And I had not even thought about that. I, I can see that. I think that's a good one. If they go I mean, on it, man, yeah. Yeah, because you look at the big stages. I mean, we talked about McGahee, the 2003 Fiesta Bowl, the, the championship game. You, you talked about Theismann happened on Monday Night Football, and this happened in the Elite Eight game, which this, this game was, in my opinion, the national championship game. Whoever won it is going to win it all. But, I mean, I just think you look at all these big stage injuries, and if Louisville ends up winning it all, then this thing is going to be big. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people already root against Duke anyways, but after that injury, I mean, it was pretty much just yeah. Duke fans <laughs> rooting for themselves. Nobody likes Duke, let's be honest. Yeah. I think that's one thing we our, our site could agree on. So, um, yeah. Which kind of brings me to the non-Duke Final Four that we got here. Um, I'm kind of glad, and I know Tay will kind of take offense to this, I'm kind of glad it's kind of there's only one blue team in here. It's not the blue <laughs> team anybody expected. Um, but uh, I, I guess here, we got the early matchup with Louisville versus Wichita State, which if you just said that before the tournament is a big mismatch, but we'll kind of get to into that um, matchup here. And then the later game is the Mich Michigan Wolverines versus Syracuse um, in that suffocating zone. Uh, I think the latter game is going to be better to watch. I mean, you got – Trey Burke versus that zone, but what are your what is your guys' thoughts on, on Louisville and, and again against Wichita State? 
I think it's interesting that, I mean, we'll have kind of that classic powerhouse team versus the upstart, which, you know, traditionally when we get to this point in the tournament, that Cinderella, that slipper falls off. So people will expect Wichita State to kind of just fall apart. But I think that they have a good team. I think that they'll play Louisville a lot tougher than people expect. But I, I just don't know. I, I, it'll be really interesting to me to see if Louisville continues the momentum. Uh, I, I think they're the best team, so I expect them to win. But you never know. Yeah, I'm I'm on the opposite end. I think, don't get me wrong, I'm really happy for Wichita State. I mean, as a Kansan, I can say that. I'm not really rooting for them, to be honest. But, I mean, you look at Louisville. They got Russ Smith. He's been going off, averaging 26 points per game in the tournament. Their defense is unbelievable. I just think that Wichita State is going to kind of put their put their tail between their legs, so to speak. And I think that Louisville's defense is going to dominate. They're going to have, you know, 20 to 30 points off turnovers and just kind of it's going to turn it into a – layup fest for Louisville, but I mean, we'll see. You never know in the tournament. I would have, I mean, who would have said that Wichita State would make it this far, but that's just my prediction. I don't think that Wichita State really has a chance in this one. Well, I think, I mean, they're, they're, I think their chance was going to be being that underdog, but now I think it's crazy to say that the number one overall seed in the tournament is kind of like the, the underdog after that yeah. injury now. Like, they kind of stole that mojo from them. Um, and it seems, I don't know, call me crazy, but I think hasn't Peyton Siva been there for like 15 years? <laughs> Or am I getting him mixed up with Francisco Garcia? Because they, they look, I don't know, he seems like he's been there forever. It's like the same on the, on the they all look alike hashtag right there. <laughs> I need to say it. Uh, <laughs> no, him and Skylar Diggins have been at their respective schools for 12 years. <laughs> I guess, man. Is Diggins even a senior? I, don't, I keep thinking that she is, but hey, we'll see. I think she is. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I think. We're kind of all in agreement that Louisville is probably going to win that. Um, I like Greg Marshall. He's a pretty good coach. I know they haven't been in the Final Four in like 50 years, but they're running into a buzzsaw right now. I think it's over for those guys within the first 20 minutes. But um, that next game, though, I think this is where probably we're going to be a little split. Um, Michigan representing the Big Ten and the the best conference in basketball, in my opinion. Um, And then against Syracuse, I think I remember, I think it might have been Kenny Smith or Greg Anthony said before the tournament, they were, they're a team that's good in like five, six game stretches, and then they just lose focus. And he's like, well, this is a five, six game stretch, so they're probably going to be focused. And this is exactly what's happening right now. Um, I guess what are your guys' thoughts on that one? You know, I think this is the thing that surprised, no, it hasn't surprised, well, one thing that surprises me is that Syracuse has actually kept it together for this amount of time, because for me, Syracuse and My other team, Georgetown, that I always pick are the teams that seem to go, maybe go to the Sweet 16, but they could lose day two. You just never know what happens with Syracuse. They seem to flame out or do really well. And I thought this year they would flame out. But conversely, I thought that Michigan would end up doing really, really well. They have good guard play. They have streaky shooters on the team. So I thought that they'd be able to, and they have Trey Burke. So I thought that that would be, you know, a team that to watch out for in the tournament. And I think it's a really interesting matchup of the shooters of Michigan versus the zone of Syracuse to see which one of those kind of evens out. Because Syracuse doesn't play your typical, you know, old man zone. They have athletic players on that team. They can get after you on defense. You know, it's just that the zone thing kind of gets made fun of. But I ultimately I ultimately like Michigan, though. Was zones for cowards? Is that what zone is for cowards. But I ultimately like Michigan in this one. <laughs> yeah, I've been going back and forth on this one uh, ever since I found out that they would be playing. I mean, because you, Greg said it all. You look at their, you look at Syracuse's zone. I mean, Bayheim recruits these types of guys simply to play zone with tons of length. I mean, their arms are just unbelievably long. So they, co- yeah, exactly. They cover so much space. But then, I mean, you look at Michigan, who's got Stauskas. He hit six threes against Florida. Was on fire in the first half. They also got Trey Burke. He can penetrate. Hardaway can penetrate a little bit, break down that zone, maybe kick it out to Stauskas. Maybe Trey Burke can hit a couple threes. Um, I'm going to have to give the slim margin victory to Michigan. You know, I think Trey Burke should be the national player of the year. It's gonna be, I think it's going to be a great game, um, a lot better than the first one. But I'm going to give the slight edge to Michigan. 
Yeah, I'd probably have to go with uh, with Michigan as well. I, I like I said, I think Trey Burke is the best player in the, in the nation. He's been playing phenomenal. I mean, he pulled he basically put Michigan on their back to beat to knock out KU. Right. Um, and that McGarry kid, where the heck did he come from? Kid's a, a man beast. Yeah, Mitch McGarry's turning into Aaron Kraft. Everyone's gonna say. <laughs> There was no, no. <laughs> that's, that's, so that'll be the guy that everybody either loves or hates. Exactly. He's that plucky young player. He, he has so much heart. He's a uh, oh, the game where the intangibles are through the roof. Oh man, it's funny you mentioned Aaron Kraft. I went off on him for like a week. Um, and it's weird you think about because I'm all about Marshall Henderson. Even though he gets in trouble all the time, he's a ball hog. He's a volume shooter, which I hate. Um, talks so much crap, and I was all on his board. Then you got Aaron Kraft, who, who does everything he's supposed to do. You know, he makes he passes the ball and selfish plays hard. And I hate the guy. Right, I don't understand that. He probably uh, helps old ladies across the street. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's the the commentators ruining for me. That's what it is. That's possible. I, I hate both of them, Henderson and Kraft. So, and McGarry. He's a land shark, dude. He's like, like, so I just hate everybody. Hey, 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 hey. That's the theme of the show. Uh, <laughs> there it is. What's your beef with the land shark, man? I don't, man, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of guys. This is funny because Aaron Kraft is the exact opposite, so why wouldn't I like him? I'm yeah. not a fan of guys that do all the extra stuff, have the extra on-court antics, which, unfortunately, KU has some of those players, too, but... I mean, I just do what you're supposed to do. That's, I mean, I'm a fan of like Larry Fitzgerald, Steve Nash, guys like that. Let's just play their game and do their thing. Uh, don't have any extra stuff that gator chomp at the crowd or flip the crowd off. At, tell, <laughs> but the gator chomp was great, though. How do you not like the gator chomp? <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I, was it was it Deadspin or CNNSI had the? Uh, of course, everything comes down to race nowadays. They were saying if he was black. We wouldn't like him as much. I guess you don't like him already, but they're saying that America wouldn't like him as much as they do. So, so, uh, so what it basically boils down to is, how, if like he's like Allen Iverson, he won't get liked as much. No, basically, if he was Jr. He's if he's Jr. Smith, like I don't. There like you go. Oh man, I don't like Jr. Smith though, so we can't, we can't do that. Oh, so, uh, then, yeah. so, Tate, so Tate, I take it that you're not a big uh, Johnny football fan, then. Not really, no. <laughs> I mean, when, when the Heisman was going on, it was like Johnny football, who I don't like. I wanted Monty Teo to win, but that was before the whole hoax thing. And then you got <laughs> Colin Klein, who is literally, he's, he's a K-State guy, but he's literally like the poster child of college football, just the nicest guy in the world. So I, I didn't really want Johnny Football to win, but I knew he was going to, so that's fine. So Yeah. I mean, we got That's actually a, yeah. a really interesting thing though about what happened with Johnny Football. Like and we might actually when we get ready for college football, we gonna save that topic because we're gonna have to come back to that of how the media packaged Johnny Football up into the Heisman and then how he acted after the Heisman kinda happened and how that's all basically gone. Yeah, him, to, him believing in Twitter account is stupid. He's just looking for more attention. He's saying, I want to be more private in my personal life. Like, no, you don't. You just want to be on SportsCenter saying that you deleted your Twitter account. Yeah, it's... <laughs> oh, I can't wait till college football. I don't know. So you probably... I'm trying to think of uh, KU guys. We won't bring up Todd Reesing. I know you're going to do that. But um, <laughs> what about Talib? You probably don't like... Uh, what is it? Yeah, not really. I mean, he was a great player, but that whole thing during the Orange Bowl where he, he felt like Dion, you know, I love him getting the pick six, but I, just, I it it doesn't belong. I just say. That's, that's one of the few, uh, that might be the only KU football player that I like, I think, is Talib. It's because of that stuff. <laughs> you know, what about uh, Dez Briscoe? You didn't like him? He scored Des, like 20 I mean, touchdowns on us that one yeah, game, Des man. Briscoe's I wasn't going like man. that. I mean, he scored a lot of touchdowns, but. Like Todd, I mean, I like Todd Reesing because he was little and like he didn't take any anything from anyone. Like he had a, he either had a touchdown against, I think it was against Virginia Tech in the Orange Bowl, where he like got up. He didn't really get up in his face, but he kind of just stood up and his big D lineman was right there, and he was just kind of yelling and screaming, not necessarily at him, but I just thought that was kind of cool. But so he's kind of like a, an Aaron Kraft. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> 
I have no bases by people I like. <laughs> like. Oh, man. All right, we kind of got off subject on that one. Um, any other comments about the tournament? We didn't really talk about the previous games other than where's leg. I mean, that's kind of dominating everything at this point. So, no. Um, besides, oh, let me let me give a shout-out to uh, FGCU out there who ruined my hopes and dreams and got eliminated. <laughs> I was cheering for the Eagles, hoping Dunk City would continue, and then they had to ruin it and get blown out. They probably would have gave Michigan a better game. Probably. The way Florida was shooting. Yeah, no kidding. Um, all right, let's see. All right, the only other thing I have on the agenda, it's kind of a surprise for you guys, is I'm going to try to start a Sports Jeopardy segment on this show. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give an answer, to a question, and you have to answer the, the question as an answer. You guys have seen Jeopardy before, so you know how it goes. Um, here's the first one. This is a test run. When I say overrated, what do you guys think of? That's the answer, overrated. Hmm. Who is Tim Tebow? <laughs> We're knocking them all down. We've got Johnny Football, Aircraft, <laughs> Tim Tebow. Today. Sorry. Send your, <laughs> send your hate mail to Derek Hernandez. I, I would agree with Tim Tebow. I'm going to go on a different tangent. I'm not going to say a person, but I'm going to say what is home field advantage in the NFL playoffs? Ooh. Oh. That's a good one. That's a good one. Well, it's crazy, though, because up until what? Uh, Green Bay was undefeated at home for a long time. Yeah, then they lost to the I mean, you look at the Ravens. Yeah, they, yeah, that's a good point. I think at the NFL, it's um, I kind of agree with that. I mean, the skill level is so close that it really just comes down to coaching and a couple turnovers, and it's that's the game. Right. Or ask Peyton Manning how much that is overrated. That guy never wins on the road, so maybe he might disagree with you. On that, but. Right. All right. I didn't really have an answer to that one, so that was I was kind of see what you guys were going to say. Kind of had an idea. Team moving you mentioned there. I was going to say Beyonce Knowles, but... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> She's overrated. That couple is overrated. Um, send, again, anyway. send your hate mail to Derek. <laughs> hate, hate. Uh, all right, second one. This is a funny one. I thought this was a good one. It might not be funny to you guys, but the answer is a template for a Disney witch's face. <laughs> what? <laughs> who, who is this? Are we supposed to go with like a person? Yeah, who who has the template for a Disney witch's face? Uh, and this is a college basketball show today, so I should narrow it down. Uh, I mean, we have to mention somebody in the college basketball world. Yeah. Well, I guess if you have somebody else, I had somebody in mind. But if you could think of somebody with a a, a face that would be the template for it. Okay, I got I got one. Who is Andy Enfield's wife? Whoa! Whoa. I think Craig's gonna disagree with me on that one. Whoa! That's like Greg's game right now. No, I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, and I I was I liked her up there with the kids, <laughs> looking wifely and stuff. I'll let that go though. Uh, dang. <laughs> As, I'm gonna have to defer to Derek on this one and let you. I cannot think. Right. Of the correct answer is who is Thad Mata? <laughs> <laughs> that guy looks exactly like a witch on like every single Disney movie. His nose is like I taken did, off a screen. I just on thought of one though. Who? Who is Bartolo Colon? Ooh, he's more like a troll though. That would, like Andy Shrek. Enfield's wife would answer the first question. When you said overrated, that would answer Ooh. it. Jeez, oh, you, so might going to women go, now. you might as well just hit the trifecta and go Kate Upton. <laughs> oh! No, no she's not overrated right now. She is a very attractive woman. She's got some great assets. But I think in a few years when her metabolism is shot, she's going to get... I'll tell you, yeah, no... I'm with you on that one. Kate Upton, Beyonce, and Kim Kardashian in like five years are going to blow up. 
But still, uh, Beyonce is not overrated. Beyonce is not overrated, though. Her and her hate dancing is way overrated. And her over singing. It's all about Kelly Rowland. Uh, all right, number three, Sports Jeopardy. This is the last one I have, unless you guys want to throw something at me. The answer is Trey Burke. Why, why do you got to ask those questions to me? <laughs> you got to get, you gotta get for the first show, man. Come on. We can't let you off easy. Trey Burke's a great player. The answer, or the question to Trey Burke is, who is Heartbreaker? All right. Who is the KU killer? That's... <laughs> You guys basically said the same thing in different ways there. Uh, I had to do it. I had to do it. We were nice for you the whole show. That's all right. We were actually joking around at the bars last Saturday. Like, how should we handle this? Should we be like, because today is April Fool's too. We were going to pretend to be like complete like assholes. <laughs> and you just like just click exit. You just leave the show like mid-show to see what he would do. <laughs> that was, we did that. That was so funny though. Like, what happens if he just leaves? <laughs> But we, we were going to do that. So, um, Okay, I don't have any other topics. Uh, I mean, you, this is usually where we either just piece out, kind of do a random musing or something like that. If you guys have anything to talk about, we can do that now. If not, um, we can kind of wrap up the show. Floor is open. I got, I got something. What did you guys think of, if you guys have seen it, the Louisville-Baylor uh, women's game with Brittany Griner getting – would seem, to me, in my opinion, she got harassed, and I don't know how they didn't call fouls. But they, that reminded me of those. I think this is the second show in a row I mentioned this. Those old Heat Knicks, like mid nineties or right, early yeah, nineties. That's, that's a good comparison. Muggy. And Baylor's coach was like, she about stripped in the middle of the court. She was so upset that game. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the, that was the only way they're going to win that game if they were going to let him get away with that. I mean, if you're if you're not as talented, you just beat up the other team. Um, they kind of use the Jordan rules on Brittany Griner, but I don't know. I don't agree with that officiating. Uh, I mean, I'm a fan of, of aggressive play, but that would seem kind of over the top. Yeah, it's it's crazy to me because it's crazy to see Brittany Griner go out like that. Uh, but yeah, that was basically that's a good Nashville, Derek. He took it right out of my mouth though. They used the Jordan rules on her, and if they're gonna I mean, let him get away with it, they were just gonna keep doing it. So. Yeah, I, it was, it was like rough. Five minutes left in the first half or second half. Yeah, that was uh -oh. that was crazy. I can't believe it. And that was. And if somebody said this, I can't take credit for it. But that was the biggest upset um, in the either tournament. Like that was a huge, huge upset. You think? Yeah, you think that more than that Georgetown get beat. Yeah, because this, this is what Georgetown does, man. I, I got to stop picking him in my bracket, but that's a whole other thing. Dude, no, Alan Iverson is walking through that door, man. And neither is Patrick Ewing. <laughs> you got anything else, Tate? I thought you were going to say something, man. No, I was just going to say I would agree with it being the biggest upset. I mean, in my if I would have done a women's bracket, which no disrespect to the women, but I'm just not interested <laughs> As much. I there was, I would have thought nobody's going to get within, I mean, maybe the UConn or Notre Dame, nobody's going to challenge Baylor. And when I heard they were down by, what, 17 or 18, I was shocked. And then, you know, they, they came back, but then they ended up losing. So that, that's a pretty, that's a big upset. So, I mean, I would say. You know, I, think so. I think a bigger upset is that us actually talking about women's basketball on the show. I think that's a bad that, upset. You no, know, that's a good point. And I'm surprised that I was actually the one that brought it up. Yeah, you brought it up, dude. Well, look, at you bring, look at you bringing diversity of sport into our <laughs> discussion. I know, dude. Way to make us look bad over here. Now we're going to have to expect <laughs> this stuff from you every show. I want like at least one obscure sports reference at the end of every show. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I right? do watch golf a lot. Okay. I'm excited for Tiger to so, be back. I want him to win a Masters. Me too. Got anything, Greg? Nah, I don't have anything else. Huh? We kind of we covered it for the day. All right. Well, what we're gonna, probably going to do then, uh, we'll probably have the next episode of this next Tuesday after the championship game um, for March Madness. Um, 
and you know for damn sure I'll probably have a few uh, WrestleMania notes on set this Sunday as well. And it'll probably be just me talking about that. I don't expect you guys to do anything for that. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to get Brandon Kavanaugh, who used to be on our site, because I think, I think he still watches. But. 